in the Sinjar province of northern Iraq, Dalal, a Yazidi woman, was living with her husband Kudaida and their three children. The Yazidi people, also known as Yazidi, are said to be one of the world's oldest religious groups and have a history of facing persecution. When Islamic State fighters came to raid their village, they massacred thousands of people and forced many to flee for their lives. These crimes were not the first time that groups have tried to wipe out the Yazidi in acts of genocide. Dalal and Kudeda tried desperately to get their children to safety, but Dalal and her daughters were captured and imprisoned by IS. They were among 7,000 other Yazidi women and girls taken as sex slaves in the Sinjar area. After six months of abuse and slavery, Dalal and one of her daughters managed to escape and were reunited with the others in Turkey. Dalal's youngest daughter was never returned to her family, and Dalal's ward felt shattered as she carried the burden of not knowing her fate. In Turkey, Dalal's family tried to find work and access education in the city, but this proved near impossible. Dalal knew there was little chance of a meaningful future for them if they remained in this situation. After what felt like a lifetime of waiting and hoping, Dalal and her family were finally granted refugee status and were accepted for resettlement to Australia. They traveled across the world in the hope of making a new life for themselves in safety. Dalal and her family had experienced many changes after being resettled to a small Australian town which felt a world away from their past. When working with people from a refugee background, we need to consider their traumatic experiences before arriving to Australia. It could include physical torture, psychological torture, as well as deprivation of food, health, education, shelter. And then the challenges of settling into a new country, as well as the everyday life stresses that they may experience, which we all experience, and how all those three factors can impact in their ability to settle in a new country and also recover from any existing mental health challenges that they are experiencing. All those things really do impact on the way that a person does interact with services and receive services. Things became harder for Dalal. Traumatic memories came back in nightmares and she increasingly felt fearful of others, not knowing who she could trust. She spent many days crying, thinking of her daughter who remained missing, unable to even get out of bed. If refugees and asylum seekers do not receive access to services that might be able to empower them or to build their strength, they might develop severe mental health problems. They might also be hospitalized for a long period of time. As Dalal's mental health worsened, her eldest daughter, Nadia, assumed much of the household responsibility, often interpreting for her parents at appointments instead of attending school. After many difficult months, Dalal began to access practical mental health supports and eventually trauma counseling, both using interpreters. Refugees and asylum seekers have strength and resilience. Everything that they had had been vanished and they restarted their life. And to be able to build on their strength, they can become independent and they can be empowered person that can contribute into the Australian system or way of life. Alongside her family, Dalal began to find ways to manage the symptoms of her depression, building on the resilience and strength 
that had brought her this far to help her through the next stage of her life.